Hi guys, welcome back to my channel again. I'm recording a video that I'm wanting to do for so long. And particularly because I started doing sunscreen reviews and with all the Korean sunscreen SPF values recently very hot on YouTube. So I thought it's time for me to learn a little bit more about the Australian regulation here for the sunscreen. And I've received a few comments in the past reviews as well. Because I've mentioned some of the products we don't have it in Australia that I purchased overseas. And people are saying the reason is not in Australia for a good reason. So I thought I'd dig into, dig into it a little bit and I actually found 10 basic questions when I was just reading and learning and researching. I figured maybe it's the common questions that we all come across. So this is like sunscreen 101. It's a very educational but I also include some of the really famous, not famous, like popular sunscreens here that can easily confuse us which was confusing me before I dive into learning about the Australian sunscreen regulation. So if you want to know the 10 questions that I summarize, I reckon that everyone should not should know, like if you're interested, I guess these are the common questions that you want to call clarified. So before we get started, don't forget if you like today's video, consider giving me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and leave your comments down below. Number one question is, what is the regulation for Australian sunscreen? It is the TGA, of course, I just mentioned, and what does the TGA do? So TGA stands for the Therapeutic Goose Administration. This is part of the Australian Government Department of Health. So it is responsible for regulating all the therapeutic goods. That's not just including the sunscreen, but also prescription med but also prescription medications, vaccines, vitamins, and supplements that I mentioned in my previous empty videos, which I just finished recording, and also medical devices like the scanning machines that you see, x-rays, ultrasound, MRI, all those blood and blood products, and sunscreen, as we're talking about here. Naturally, question number two, what is the TGA sunscreens regulation? So we are actually having primary sunscreens and secondary sunscreens. So under TGA umbrella, primary sunscreens means the primary function of the product is for the protection of UV radiation and it's having an SPF four or more. So for example, like this uh, Natio, I'm always saying it's Natio, but I've just dived into Natio brand recently and I realized that's how you pronounce it. So it says sun care, bought spectrum, sunscreen, SPF 50 plus. That means this the primary function of this particular product is for UV protection. So this is a primary sunscreen. Um, the secondary ones are the products that having a primary purpose other than a sun protection, but it's also containing sunscreen agents. So these are the moisturizers that we have with a SPF greater than 15. We see a lot of uh, day creams having SPF 15. They are not under the TGA secondary sunscreen regulation umbrella because it has to have a SPF more than 15. A very good example is this Olay Total Effect whipped UV cream bought spectrum SPF 30. This is a cream when I bought, I figured this is like a day cream because it wasn't putting in the sunscreen category if you shop in the chemist. It's putting in a day cream skincare area. This is definitely a moisturizer with an SPF 30 which is more than 15. So these are the two primary and secondary sunscreens but there are also other sunscreens they're containing SPF 4 or more with a particular ingredient such as an insect repellent or like ingredients from cows, sheep, goat and mole deer. An example is the Cancer Console Repel Sunscreen. This is sunscreen plus insect repellent. Because of the ingredient they're containing within, they are not either primary or secondary but there are other sunscreens and the TGA umbrella. You notice by now TGA regulation has a lot of things to do with ingredients which we're going to talk about in a minute because that's how they regulate sunscreens. So as I mentioned previously, SPF with 15 or more can be classified as a sunscreen in the moisturizer, but how about the moisturizer that we see daily on the market that containing at SPF 15 or less? So they are considered as cosmetic products. I've got a couple here like a day cream as SPF 15, simple triple protect moisturizer SPF 15, and this is the CeraVe 
facial moisturizing lotion with SPF 15. So I'm doing a review of all the daily moisturizers containing SPF and just ranking them if you are wondering which one is good from the Australian drugstore. So that's a different topic uh, that is still in the process. But these are the two products I'm testing out at the moment. So both of these are considered as cosmetic products. Their ingredients are not going to be regulated by TGA. They are going to be regulated by the National Industrial Chemical Notification and Assessment Scheme. And the product safety and labeling standards, what you put on here for sale, are going to be regulated by the Australian Competition and Customer Commission. But there are also other secondary sunscreens that are also considered as cosmetic products. Um, first is the moisturizers that we just mentioned, and we also have any lip products that we sunscreen with SPF 4 or higher, but these are not primary sunscreens. There are actually some primary lip sunscreen that is available. I think it's from the Sensor Care brand. They have like primarily lip sunscreen. So these are fine and they are regulated by TGA. I'm talking about the general lip product that we've got like a lip balm with SPF, all those products there. They are considered as cosmetic products and also some bathing skincare products with SPF between 4 to 15. And the last but not least is what I was really interested in and I end up um, emailing one of the company. These are some foundations or they call them tinted base products with sunscreen with SPF 4 or higher. So one of the most confusing products here is Oh, it's the Polar's Choice in Australia. So this is the Polar's Choice Super Light Daily Wrinkle Defense. Here it's got a sticker on top and says Tinted Base SPF 30. I peeled it off and what it was covered is called Broad Spectrum. So I emailed Polar's Choice and I said, is this a sunscreen regulated by TGA or if this is a cosmetic product? And I've got a reply, I'll put it somewhere here, but if I remember correctly, um, the lady that replied me said, um, this is a sunscreen and it is having broad spectrum. So to me, that just means it is the same in a category of foundation or tinted base. I'm not saying it's not a good sunscreen. I still believe it's good sunscreen, probably having what it claims to be SPF 30, broad spectrum. But the reason they cover it because it's not passing the TGA regulation criteria, so they have to put it as a cosmetic product. The other product that's having very similar issue that I actually complained in my last sunscreen reviews are these two from Cancer Console. So one of is their face they wear moisturizer matte in their light tint. The other one is their face they wear BB cream matte in the light tint color. So these two obviously the BB cream is classified as a tinted base product. So it's a cosmetic product with SPF 50 plus. Well, this moisturizer is actually a primary sunscreen past TGA regulation. So if you are looking for a sunscreen that is under the umbrella of TGA in Australia, I would say go for this one. And that is something else I want to make sure in my future reviews that I will not include any of the BB cream tinted base or foundation. Obviously, I never include any foundation. I will not include these type of products in the future sunscreen reviews because I don't want to confuse you guys. I figure if you're looking for a sunscreen in Australia, you're looking for one that passed TGA regulation. I will be giving a, another separate review because I've actually got a few different sunscreens that is all not passed the TGA regulation, but they're all passed the FDA and they're all considered as a sunscreen overseas. And I purchased them and I, there are a few that I really liking, so I'm just still gonna mention it, but that's gonna be in a separate video. Videos and I'll make sure I do that separately in the future so I don't confuse you guys. So if I made any confusion, because these two are actually ranking pretty high, and I still love them, like I trust SPF says here, and I think it has everything. After introducing all these um, definitions about primary, secondary sunscreen, under the TGA, under as a cosmetic products, is there a good way of us to differentiate it? Yes, and there's a very easy, simple way that I found is so helpful. So let's bring some of the um, sunscreens. With all the sunscreen that is TGA regulated products, they will have a label number. They're saying as OST L and with a serial number there. So this is Australian labeling number. This means they are entered the Australian Register of Therapeutic Goods. We call them ARTG in abrasion. And same with the Polas toy as well. There is none that you can see at the front labeling because you are supposed to see it if it is. 
but the Olay whipped cream, you can actually find this labeling right here. That means this is a TGA regulator product. There are also other things that you can use to help you differentiate it, but this is one of the very, very obvious and the most easy, simple way to differentiate it, the two categories. So, now we know there are the different lines, how exactly the TGA regulates sunscreens. The TGA assesses the safety of ingredients in the sunscreen products before it's being released onto the market. So TGA never open up a product and say, let's open up this product and see what it is. Instead, they will ask the manufacturer to give all the ingredients even before they start manufacturing this one. And TGA will assess each individual ingredient just to make sure they are safe to use and there is no reactions. If there are reactions, you need to mention to them and they need to be listed. It's just like when you're having manufactured your prescription medications, how you manufacture a prescription medication is the same as how you manufacture a sunscreen here in Australia. The ring is just crazy. You're just going against me. So there are a few very important criteria that TGA would like each of the sunscreen company to follow. First, all the products must be manufactured by TGA approved manufacturing facilities and they can and can only use include TGA approved ingredients. And also, for all the sunscreens, they also have to meet the requirements set out in the Australia New Zealand Standard Sunscreen Products Evaluation and Classification. So this is a separate standard that was developed by the Standards of Australia, so not the TGA. TGA regulates this part and then they have to go to the Standards of Australia to pass their evaluation as well before they can actually produce the product and to be released onto the market. I feel like this question has been already just briefly touched on in the previous one but we still want to know why some of the very popular products here like this that is not even available in Australia and like the Polo's Choice one they become a cosmetic product in Australia. Once I started doing the research I realized the Australian regulatory guidelines actually asking for a lot of detailed information for the company before they can actually supply a product in Australia. So the common questions and requirements are being registered or listed as therapeutic sunscreens or if they are having the exemption from TGA regulation, most likely they are the secondary products and they also need to be advertised as the therapeutic good sunscreens and be able to report adverse reactions and to pass a stability test and they also need to contain adequate labeling. That includes like the name, expiring date, SPF, if they have any water resistance, if they are broad spectrum sunscreen, what's their active ingredients, expiring date, their batch number, their Australian L labeling number, the one we said under TGA regulation. All this stuff need to be provided and they also need to pass the manufacture and quality control and to use permanent ingredients and listing all the new ingredients to also ensure and to reproduce SPF test results. So there's a lot to be required for them to actually decide to bring this product into the market and apparently this is a quite restricted one from what I've learned. I haven't been digging into a lot of the other regulations uh, overseas but just by reading this I can see why some of the company just can't be bothered to bring this into Australia and one of the reasons why it's so restricted because of, uh, skin cancer is actually very very high risk in Australia. The sun damage, the sunburn that directly onto the skin so we need to have really good sunscreens to actually going against it so the re that is probably why the regulation is so restricted and that is also why some of these popular products are not available or they're no longer considered as a TGA approved um, sunscreen product. Like I mentioned earlier, when the TGA going through their regulations, they're making sure each of the ingredients in the products are good before they can go manufacture and to be released onto the market. So what happens once they're already on the market? TGA has a post-market complaints program so they can undertake random reviews of the products on the market and just to make sure the products comply with relevant regulation requirements. The other very important thing that we can do to make sure each of the product is good as they're claimed to be is to report any of the experiences of the side effects. So if a lot of the people are reporting for the same or similar issue for a particular product, 
they will start doing investigations and they'll give you a report to tell you what is actually going on with this particular product. I remember this news, I think a couple years back when they're having Peppa Pig sunscreen from Cancer Console. I believe there were a few moms they were reporting having really bad sunburns afterwards. And TGA actually did a random check on all the products afterwards. And the only way they can do this post-marketing complaints check is because there are more than one family across Australia was reporting the same product for a very similar side effects. And that will promote TGA to do random check. So if you are using something that you really think it's having a bad reaction, please report it because someone else might have the similar issues and TGA just waiting for that number to be high enough to alert them to do this testing and to make sure the product is actually good. We just mentioned that for a product to actually be out on the market, not just passing all these TGA guidelines, there are also other guidelines which you need to provide good labeling. But who are regulating all these labeling? They are unfortunately not from TGA because these including testing the SPF value if they are bought spectrum, if they are water resistant and these actually require different machines and different specialized professionals that is not just about the ingredients. So TGA does not undertake any of these tests directly but they will run by other accredited labs. So once again, the post-market complaint program from TGA, that's where it come in play. If the product is already out on the market and people are saying they're having bad reactions, so they will get involved again and testing the product one more time just to make sure everything is up to the claim. And the last but not least are the recommendations that's coming from TGA. Why are we putting on sunscreen? We are protecting UV lights. And there are two UV rays, UVA and UVB. A, I like to think of for aging, which is a long-term effect. You might not notice after a couple days outside in the sun. UVB, I like to think about for burning, so you will notice that, and that's where you see the color changes and the heat and even peeling of the skin afterwards. We notice UVB a lot more frequent and that is why people tend to put on sunscreen when it's sunny and hot outside because you know it's gonna burn you. But on a cloudy day, there's still UVA coming through the clouds. You just don't notice in a short term. But long term wise, you notice skin cancer cells might be forming, all the wrinkles that might cause to buy these rays as well. And there are SPF and bulk spectrum that we're looking for on a sunscreen label. SPF indicates how effective the product is against the sunburn. So SPF is in relation with UVB, so they are in the same group. And the bulk spectrum refers to the protection of your skin from both UVA and UVB. Therefore, if I would go for a sunscreen, I'd definitely go for one that contains broad spectrum because that concludes everything and I want to protect as much as I can. And when you're looking at SPF, you want to have a higher SPF level, which means it can be more effectively protect you from a UVB burning sensation. So if that makes sense, now let's go to the recommendations. For fair skin who burns easily, TGA recommend to use a broad spectrum sunscreen with SPF 30 or more to be most appropriate. And if you are going for a swimming or if you are going to be heavily sweating for that particular day outside in the sun, we would recommend to use a water resistant sunscreen and only products with SPF 30 or more can actually claim having a water resistant ability. So if you see a sunscreen is SPF 20 and saying it's water resistance, don't even go purchase that product because it's not true. We can't claim it. And don't forget to reapply the sunscreens every two hours and obviously the correct amount of sunscreen. So we say a half teaspoon for the face, neck and ear. So a half teaspoon, I like to use the fingertip. It's like one fingertip. That's for me how I measure it every morning because I don't have a teaspoon here with me. And a full teaspoon for each arm, legs, front and the back of the body. So for the limb, bigger areas, we do a full teaspoon for each of them. For the scalp, it's also very, very sensitive. So we need to wear some hat. Around your eyes, we need to go for the um, sunglasses because we also want to protect not just the skin around the eyes, but the eye itself. 
Also, if you are actually find it's difficult to be reapplied every two hours, and if you're doing some work that you're just unable to do that, please consider wearing a long sleeve top and bottom as well, and close the shoes just to further avoid excessive sun exposure. All right, that is everything for today's video. I hope you like it. I actually quite enjoy doing this research myself. If you did, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. Leave all your comments down below. If I made any mistakes or you have any questions, please leave it down. I can dig into it. I'm also learning myself and having a better understanding of the sunscreen knowledge and so we can protect ourselves a little bit better. I hope you have had a great day. Let's stay safe and stay positive and I'll see you guys in my next video. I will link all my sunscreen playlists up and down below. I'm also having a ranking of all the sunscreen I have from 2020 and I'll make sure I link it somewhere. So yeah, and bye guys!